justice of God and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning, rescue me, for you, O God, are my strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. As we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent, let us prepare ourselves for the sacred mysteries. Let us call to mind our sins and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask this Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Here is Great power to redeem. 
it is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquity. With the Lord there is steadfast love and great power to redeem. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, for you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit. Since the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his Spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. said to him, Rabbi, the people there were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem some two miles away. And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. 
Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when Mary heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you? that if you believe, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As in the last weeks, brothers and sisters, again, I will not really give a homily here in the church and in the course of this transmission, but instead all those who would like to hear one have the chance by going to the YouTube a video which has been uploaded and you can listen to a real homily there on this famous part of the Gospel called the Raising of Lazarus. Here I have only one thought to share and it has to do with how the two sisters, one after the other, in a sense, greet Jesus, react to the fact that he comes, the fact also that he comes so late. Both of them say, if you had been here, Lord, my brother would not have died. Because the phrase for us must be, well, a reminder, a wake-up call, maybe even a bit of a provocation to make sure that we realize Christ is here.
Christ is with us even in these weeks when we cannot have the Mass together in the churches. Christ's power is a power that even embraces those who are ill, who are suffering, who are afraid of dying, and even those who in fact are dying. The faith in such a moment, in such a crisis, must not be marginalized, but instead it becomes more important, more valuable, than ever. As long as Jesus is here with us, as long as he is with me, I will not die. Even if physically I will. Even when physically I will die. This is how much he loves us. How much he loves me, how much he loved his friend Lazarus. Amen. Confiteo 
Dear brothers and sisters, let us turn to God, the Heavenly Father, with our intercessions and prayers. We pray for the Church called to be a community of solidarity and a community of prayer in these troubled times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, those entrusted with taking very difficult decisions and looking forward in building a just world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick and those who care for them throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of us who belong to God's people as witnesses to the dignity and respect owed to each human person. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, for, we pray for those who are dying and those who died, especially for Alberto Enzler, father of a friend of mine who died recently in Italy, and all those who die in the course of this pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us, Almighty God, instill in us the fruits of the Christian faith. Purify us and lead us by a holy life to the joys of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, because of your goodness we have received the bread you offer you, fruit of your earth and work of human hands, which will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through this mystery of the water and wine, we come to share the divinity of Christ, we come to himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, because of your goodness we have received the wine you offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable. God, the Almighty Father, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, in having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Of exalted praise as we are. 
Christ the Son, our Lord, that you accept the blessed, his gift, his offering, his holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God the light and govern her throughout the whole world, together with the servant Francis, our Pope and parents, our bishops, and all those who hold you to the truth and all the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them to offer you the sacrifice of Christ, they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, paying your homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory you venerate, they should adore us ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord and Lord Jesus Christ, and the Blessed Joseph, the Spouse, the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Clitus, Clemens, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask and put their merits in prayer to all things who may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service and of your own family for our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count them among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless the Lord and the fruit this offering in every respect to make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and tender with hands, his eyes raised to heaven, he will go to his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and of hands. Once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Fill them with life, 
blessing is bestowed upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Precepti salutari tu soliti et divina institutione formati aude musite. Ata nostra qui es in celis, santi di te tu nome tu, adveni ad regnum tu, ti ad coluncas tua, sicut in celo ed in terra, pare nostro quotidiano da nobis odie, et imite nobis te vita nostra, sicur et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostri, et ne nos inducas in tentazione, se libera nos a malo. Delibera sua di credo e di vive, crescere sui tempi sin a te, e fai del tuo più possibile di ore scritto sin in sé in promo di stress, et di amore Peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever, says the Lord.